Hey, hey, Cold Case Cause here. We're here on Sunday afternoon. It's a beautiful evening. And Nipsey's over there in the snow. And I was a little bored, so I said, hey, let's. why don't we make a survival episode? Part of the uh, Log Cabin Living Survivalist uh, segment that I started. So I had some people comment, and they're like, well, there's no way your bill's or you just have a cell phone bill. If you burn wood, that means you got to have a, a chainsaw. And that means you got to have a chainsaw blade. And that means you got to have fuel for it. That means you got to have mixed fuel. That means you got to have bar oil. That means you got to have replacement chains. Guys, you don't need any of that, okay? Uh, all that costs hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to have all the high dollar. So I worked for a logging company for a long time. And I had my little tree service business and the, the cost of the upkeep for chainsaws is so much and you're breathing in, you know, uh, mixed fuel being burned, you know, and that oil and you're constantly breathing it in and the smoke's bad, really bad for your health to breathe that nonstop. Um, I think a lot of lung related issues, um, can be attributed to people running chainsaws back when they're younger, breathing that two cycle smoke. Um, <clears throat> But not only that, they're incredibly expensive to run. You have to run high octane fuel in it, you know, if you want to get the the best out of it, especially up here in the mountains, uh, because the oxygen's thin. So, um, and then the chains they dull out because so this is cedar here, and out here the cedar when the wind blows the sand actually embeds into the bark of the cedar. So when you cut it with a chainsaw, it dulls up the blade. And I'm not into cutting down trees and stuff. I like to leave the big tall dead trees. Uh, for part of the ecology and the ecosystem, you know, the bugs use the trees, the birds, the bugs, you guys know the deal. So I just wanted to come live and to say, I'm going to show you right now how to get a full night of firewood. It's been, it got down to negative 15 the other night. It's warmed up a little bit. It's now getting down into the tens and the twenties. Uh, thank God again, but, um, we're staying nice and warm in the cabin. And I want to show you all, you do not need all this high tech gas powered equipment to survive uh, off grid with, you know, in a cabin setting. As long as you have a, a, a pot belly stove, I'm going to show you right now how you can stay warm through the night. So we're out here on the Mesa. You want to find what wood is the hottest wood. So cedar has a real nice heat index uh, on the scale. There's a, a, a heat scale, uh, you know, it tells the different types of woods in the heat index, but. Out here we have juniper and pinion pine and cedar mainly, and then a little bit of scrub oak, uh, which is gamble oak, and uh, little aspen patches. So that's what uh, the trees are like here out on the Mesa in Hesperus Mountain. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I'm gonna show you right now <clears throat> how easy and how quick it is. And I, what I ask you is, what would Paul Bunyan do in this situation? All right, and you're about to see. Got it down to the science because I've got to do it every day. This is part of the chop wood and carry water routine. So when I break the branches, I want to break them to where they're almost firewood links so they go right into the fireplace. And you create a, create a nice bundle. This is also helping the tree. Breaking off these dry dead branches, they burn really good and slow in the fireplace. And it also causes the root ball, it agitates the root balls and creates new growth on this tree. So you're actually helping mother nature 
by using these old branches and these cedar branches burn hot and slow and they burn all night long. stuff right here look at this beautiful wood this is cedar and this is what they make nice furniture and stuff out of it smells amazing it's a natural insect repellent it makes your cabin smell great and you see this bark right here it's like paper it's great for starting fires. I'm on strip. But it's great for starting fires when it's super cold and you run out of fire in the middle of the night and you wake up and you're half asleep. You just bend this up and kind of get it kind of get it agitated like that. And you just hit it with the lighter and it just flames right up, y'all. Or the torch. But look at this pretty red wood. It, I mean, it lights up real quick. It's super dry. We're helping the tree. We're helping Mother Nature. And look how much wood I got already, guys. This right here is enough for one night. And look how long, what did that take me? Five minutes. And I have a bundle of wood that'll keep me and the dogs warm all night. Take me five minutes. And now I can carry all this back in one. So, like I say, what would Paul Bunyan do? He wouldn't be running a gas-powered chainsaw, spending all kinds of money on fuel and chains. This is what Paul Bunyan would do. This is the only tool you need. You don't need all the fancy cutting equipment and all that. And I'm going to come live again. They're talking about, oh, you need a snow machine way out. And I'm going to come back again on another episode and show you my version of a snow machine. Look at all this wood, y'all. This is primo cedar. Hot burning cedar, y'all. Look at this. Now this is more than a night's worth of firewood. I'm a, my cabin's just through the woods here. I'm just gonna pick it up and carry it back there when I get to the cabin. I'm gonna break it up into smaller lengths so it fits into my nice fireplace. And y'all, this is fire and heat for probably all night and then tomorrow until lunchtime. And you can see how long it took me just to rip all this down. Now this tree can get more sun in to the br lower branches. Us ripping all these dead branches off like we did is going to agitate the root ball, especially now in the winter time when it's dormant. 
and then in spring, the agitated roots, this tree will produce all kinds of new growth. And you can see there's a lot of dead here, and there's still a lot of green. This will cause it to explode with some new fresh growth. So one, we're helping Mother Nature. Two, we're not polluting with mixed two-cycle oil, you know, uh, noise pollution, smoke pollution. You're not breathing in the two-cycle smoke, which is I think is really detrimental to your lungs. Um, you're not paying out your out the pocket uh, for high dollar gas. You know, fuel is so expensive that you're constantly mixing fuel and then you have to burn your two cycle oil and your high, high dollar gasoline and you have to have bar oil for the chainsaw. So, I mean, at the end of the day, you're spending hundreds, if not thousands of dollars every winter just a chainsaw. And it's dangerous, y'all. Like a lot every year people die, mountain men. People out in the country die because they miss and nick their femoral artery when they're, when they're chainsawing in the ice and snow. It's super dangerous to chainsaw. You slip and you fall on that chainsaw blade and it just rips into you. You know, being a volunteer firefighter, we saw a lot of accidents with chainsaws in the winter because everyone, you know, it gets slick in the snow and you're swinging a blade around. And you get you slip and fall and you land on it. Bad things happen. So being way out in the country here, you got to think about your safety too. And going around and ripping branches off like we just did. We just cleaned this tree up. Got a huge pile of beautiful wood here. We're helping Mother Nature. We're doing environmental cleanup. And we're getting free heat. And this right here, y'all, is free heat. You, you know, y'all pay tons of money in propane and electrical costs to heat your home in the wintertime. This is what I do, y'all. I break off branches and burn this hot cedar branches. And you could do this at home, too. I say everyone needs a hot belly stove. Invest in a pot belly stove just in case the grid goes down, the power goes out for a month. You want to be prepared for this. And remember, I told you, log cabin living, off grid living, you got to live by the rule, the lucky seven P's perfect prior preparation prevents piss poor performance. And that's the lucky seven P's. And if you live your life by that, you will survive out here, Mother Nature, out in the backcountry. But look at this beautiful, oh man, I'm so stoked about this. Look at it. You know, I like to leave chunks like this around in the cabin. It keeps bugs out and makes your cabin smell amazing. But look at it. But I'm going to haul this back to the cabin. Y'all have a wonderful Sunday. Blessings and stay tuned. I got lots of lives coming. And uh, this is a great haul right here. Beautiful cedar wood. Have a blessed Sunday.